The following are some things that the Lord may be directing you to do if you are someone who desires to get married one day but is plagued with the dread that it will never happen for you. The first step is to make a decision in your heart that you will continue to fervently pursue the Lord regardless of your marital status. The importance of marriage cannot be overemphasized. God has made it clear that he cherishes marriage and has urged the majority of Christians to marry. God on the other hand, does not place a high value on marriage as a priority. God on the other hand is preoccupied with his own glory. God did not create us just for the sake of getting married, having children, and living happy lives. Certainly, God desires for us to accomplish these things, but also, he invites us into marriage and parenthood in order to bring him honor through our life. Rather than being an end point, marriage is a journey. A marriage is intended to bring God glory by bringing two people together as one. Marriages are not intended to be the central focus of our life. In order to constantly praise God regardless of what happens in your life, you must make a conscious decision to do so. Whenever you are committed to live for God's glory no matter what position he has put you in, whether you are single or married, you will shed your fear and will be fanning the flame of faith that God has given you through his spirit. Keep nothing from getting in the way of your desire to exalt God. Protect the excellent deposit that has been given to you, and do it with the assistance of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us according to 2 Timothy 1 verse 40. Number 2. Take some time to explore what underlying anxieties are fueling your concern about never getting married. What does the prospect of marriage imply for you? Is it the answer to your feelings of loneliness and despondency? If so, is it the solution to your desire problem? Is getting married a method of putting an end to the falsehoods your mother and father told you when you were young? Having a spouse or wife in your opinion is the only thing that will make you feel worthwhile. How many additional wants do you have that are associated with your desire to be married? Marriage has become more than a legal contract to you which is one of the reasons you are concerned about not getting married. Getting married has become a part of your identity because of the notion of getting married. All that we are afraid of are things that have some kind of control over us. When it comes to marriage, how much authority have you given it? When you relinquish control and turn everything over to God, you will no longer be afraid of never getting married. To overcome your loneliness, you must abandon your conviction that marriage is the sole solution. And instead, choose to think that God is the only one who has the ability to alleviate your suffering. Is it possible for you to arrive to the conclusion that having a spouse or wife is the only way to feel loved important and accepted in the world? If this is the case, repudiate your previous view and choose to think that God is the only one who can really make you feel loved important and accepted in the world today. You should take some time to examine what marriage has come to mean to you. And then you should take some time to recall the truth that only God has the ability to fully provide you with everything you seek in your life. Verse 1 through 2 of Psalm 16 declare as much. O oh my God, keep me safe for I have found sanctuary in you. God I declare you are my Lord, and aside from you I have nothing else. Hallelujah. As for the third point. Be open to the idea that you may never get married so that you are not paralyzed by the uncertainty of what your future may hold. Uncertainty makes us fearful. When you can't fathom the possibility of having a future without being married, it's natural to be afraid of that prospect in the far future. Imagining a scenario in which you never married but instead continued to prosper in the Lord and have a meaningful life can help to alleviate some of the anxiety. If you're someone who truly wants to be married, I'm not suggesting that you strive to be optimistic about a future in which you never marry. The denial of God's need for your heart as well as an attempt to suppress the way you truly feel are not healthy. It is natural for a healthy individual who want to marry but is unable to do so to feel unhappy and frustrated. However, they should make the decision to keep moving ahead and to continue living a meaningful life for the glory of God. Even if the path they are on is different from the path they anticipated when they tied the knot. You may envision yourself prospering even if you don't get married if you are willing to embrace the prospect of being single. Knowing that you will continue to live a meaningful life even if you never marry can relieve you of the anxiety that comes with not knowing what is going on in the world. 
We are afraid of what we do not comprehend once again. We are apprehensive about the future. God never said you shouldn't feel sad about this. To be upset about the fact that you will never marry is okay. His instruction is to be fearless. Because God gave us a spirit of strength and love and self-control, rather than a spirit of fear as stated in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. In order to pursue a relationship, use your fear of never getting married as an excuse to do the things you've been too frightened to do in the past. While Christians should have no fear of anything in this world, we should also be aware of our own sentiments rather than attempting to suppress them because we believe they are incorrect. For example, anxiety over a test you haven't studied for is not considered a sin. In fact, you should be feeling nervous since you haven't studied well for the exam. Also, in the event that you defrauded your company of money and are now frightened that you're likely to be discovered, your anxiety is understandable. Why? Because you're keeping a secret that's making you anxious about being discovered. If you are feeling guilty because you are having premarital sex, your guilt is beneficial since you are aware that you are breaching God's laws. Anxiety, fear, and guilt are all legitimate reactions when you are involved in an activity that is deserving of these emotions. It is not through suppressing your emotions that you would cope with them in this manner. Rather than being nervous about the exam, you should prepare for it by studying. When it comes to your job, you should always speak the truth so that you don't have to worry about being caught. And you should make amends with God and refrain from having premarital sex in order to be at peace with Him. Whenever we are engaging in destructive behavior, God wants us to experience unpleasant emotions since these terrible emotions serve as a motivator to change. Because it's conceivable that you should be afraid of never getting married if you are doing anything that might prohibit you from getting married and God is warning you not to do it. I've said all of that. Possibly you're aware that you're acting in such a passive manner that meeting new people is difficult, even if you believe God has called you to marriage. But you are aware that you are choosing to live a solitary life, squandering time that might be spent socializing and meeting people who may lead to a relationship. You may be concerned about the possibility of not being able to find love. If you're doing all you can to seek marriage, you shouldn't be concerned about never being engaged. However, if you are ignoring something that God has told you to do in order for him to bless you with marriage, use your fear of never getting married to encourage yourself to do the task you've been putting off for far too long. If you draw close to God as James 4 verse 8 to 10 tells you to do, he will come near to you in return. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and cleanse your hearts, you duplicitous individuals. Settle in a pit of despondency and mourning. Allow your pleasure to be transformed into sorrow and your laughter to become melancholy. You will be exalted if you humble yourself before the Lord. Be truthful with yourself and your surroundings in the event that you are engaging in behavior that you know is wrong. You may be doing something wrong even if you feel it is correct. If this is not the case, you will have nothing to be concerned about. When we humble ourselves before God, He will reward us with honor and prosperity. The next piece of advice is to pray if you are worried about never getting married. A summons to prayer is sent whenever we experience dread. In the presence of God, there is no room for fear. Because God is love as stated in 1 John 4 verses 16 through 8. In the same way, whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. In love, there is no fear, because perfect love throws away all fear. And this is true. In prayer, express your anxieties to God. Give yourself some quality time in his company. God will remove your anxieties by telling you what to do in order to seek marriage and what not to do in order to pursue marriage. And he will comfort you with his loving presence as you pray. May God help you and guide you in Jesus' name. Amen.